And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Carnotaurus, which was a request from Cole via Patreon. So thanks, Cole. The name means meat-eating bull, and this is due to its bull-like horns. And it was a large theropod that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now South America. The type species is Carnotaurus sastra. And the species name is in honor of Angel Sastra, the owner of the ranch where the skeleton was found. And the skeleton was found on a ranch named Pocho Sastra. The skeleton was found in 1984. Jose Bonaparte found Carnotaurus as part of one of the expeditions in the project Jurassic and Cretaceous Terrestrial Vertebrates of South America, which was sponsored by the National Geographic Society that started it in 1976. The skeleton they found was of an adult, and the skull and muzzle were crushed in fossilization. It took a long time to prepare the skeleton since it's in very hard rock, hematite. And Jose Bonaparte wrote a note naming Carnotaurus in 1985 describing the skull, and a more complete description was written in 1990. Carnotaurus is part of Abelosauridae, which is a group of large theropods, and its closest relatives are probably either Acosaurus or Majungasaurus. Other animals found near Carnotaurus include turtles, snakes, crocodiles, and mammals. And Carnotaurus was bipedal. It was about 26 to 30 feet, or 8 to 9 meters long, and it weighed about 1.3 to 2.1 tons. It had small forelimbs and long, slender hind limbs, and its forelimbs were proportionately shorter than other carnivores, even T. rex. So its forearm was a quarter the size of the upper arm. Its hand had four digits, but only the two middle fingers had finger bones, so its fingers were fused and immobile and probably didn't have claws. And the fourth digit was a split-like metacarpal that may have been some sort of spur. A study in 2009 found that abelosaurids had vestigial arms. They had reduced nerve fibers, like in modern emus and kiwis, which have vestigial forelimbs. If Carnotaurus kept evolving, its descendants may have lost its arms. That would have been kind of funny. (laughs) It had... Like a giant kiwi. Yes, but with teeth. Yeah. Carnotaurus had thick horns above its eyes, which is not seen on other carnivores, so it's very specialized in the horns and neck. It had a deep skull and muscular neck, and it had a straight neck instead of an S-curved neck like other theropods, and the neck was wide towards the base. It's possible that Carnotaurus used its head like a hatchet with its thick, long neck, and then its teeth would strike the prey multiple times in order to take it down. Yeah, they talk about Allosaurus possibly doing that too. Can you imagine if it had short arms? Trying to mm-hmm. whack at it with Almost no head. arms, yeah. Just... It's a balancing act for sure. That is. <laughs> Carnotaurus may have fought using its horns and neck and either by pushing their skulls together or ramming their heads and using their horns as shock absorbers. The bone horns on the brow were 5.9 inches or 15 centimeters long and probably longer in life because it probably had keratin. Keratin sheath. Yes. And these horns may have been used for fighting or display or for killing prey. The horns may have protected its eyes in fights or been used in fights the way rams use horns. In 1998, Gerardo Mazetta and his team found that Carnotaurus's neck was strong enough to absorb the force of two Carnotaurus's butting heads at a speed of 5.7 meters per second each. That's pretty good. Yeah. And... He also said that the horns could have hurt or killed small prey, which makes sense. That would be an even crazier way to try to hunt Mm -hmm. with only two legs and no real arms. Run to something small close to the ground with the top of your head. I'm not so sure about that. Yeah. Just like a bull, huh? Kind of, except they have four legs so they could actually get their head low without falling over. Oh, that's true. (laughs) (laughs) So some studies found that instead of head blows, Carnotaurus is may have pushed slowly against each other with their skulls, so then the horns would help prevent brain damage. And the horns were flat on the upper side and top of the skull, and they had strongly fused bones. In 2009, Fernando Nova said that the short skull may have helped Carnotaurus move its head more quickly, and the strong neck and rigidity and strength of their spinal columns could help when butting heads. The skull they found is 23.5 inches, or 59.6 centimeters long, and proportionally short and deep. It had a broad snout, and nasal bones had small holes and spikes. And it had small eyes and some degree of binocular vision. Its eyes were set facing slightly forwards. Interesting. Yeah, a lot of interesting things going on with Carnotaurus. They may have been able to hunt sauropods, though some scientists think that they went after small animals. They could bite quickly, but they didn't have a strong bite. 
which is also a sign for maybe it went after small prey, and they had long, slender teeth with a shallow, weak lower jaw. So its skull and lower jaw was flexible like modern snakes, and Carnotaurus could swallow small animals whole, and its teeth were pointed upwards to keep the animal from escaping its jaws. But it may have also been able to hunt large dinosaurs since its skull could withstand the force of biting larger prey. As long as it's using its upper row of teeth to smash down rather than trying to bite with the lower jaw, it sounds like. Yeah, the hatchet effect, right? Yep. In 2005, Francois Therrien and colleagues found that Carnotaurus had a bite force two times a modern American alligator and was similar to Komodo dragons, which have jaws that are better for slashing and weakening large prey. So maybe Carnotaurus ambushed and killed large animals. And then in 1998, Robert Barker also said that Carnotaurus probably ate sauropods since it's got a short snout and small teeth and strong back of the skull. And Carnotaurus was a good runner. It could sprint, though it probably wasn't quite as fast as ornithomimids. But Person and Curry published a study in 2011 where they studied 50 species of carnivorous dinosaurs, all different sizes, and found that Carnotaurus was the ninth fastest dinosaur based on muscles in the tail. It's unclear exactly how fast Carnotaurus could have run, but it probably was fast because it had caudal ribs in a V-shape in the tail vertebrae, which meant it had room to have a larger caudofemoralis muscle than other theropods. And this is the most important muscle for locomotion, and in Carnotaurus, it may have weighed up to 300 pounds or 140 kilograms. However, other muscles that help with tail movement and stability, the longissimus and spinalis muscle, were smaller, which meant that it would have had a hard time making tight turns because the hip and tail had to turn at the same time, unlike other theropods. Yeah, we talked about the caudofemoralis a couple episodes ago, and how when an animal that has that muscle and a long tail swings its tail to one side, it helps to lift the leg. And then when it swings back, it can lift the other leg. So in that way, you swing your tail back and forth and it helps lift the legs so you can run more effectively. So they think that the bigger the tail, the stronger those muscles, then the more assisting it would give the animal in running. And then also with some other details like the attachment points, of the muscle to the femur, then you get to find out, oh, it was set up for long distance running, but not particularly fast, or it was set up for sprinting. So sounds like this guy, like most predators, were set up for sprinting at pretty high speeds. But not turns. So Carnotaurus fossils had skin impressions that showed a mosaic of polygonal small scales, five millimeters in diameter, with large bumps on the sides of Carnotaurus, but it probably didn't have feathers. The skin impressions were found on the lower jaw, front of the neck, shoulder, and rib cage, and tail. And there were patches of skin impressions on the right side of the skull too, but it wasn't clear what they were when the skull was prepared, so they were accidentally destroyed. Though scientists still found that the pattern on the left and right sides of the skull were different. I'm always amazed at how many skin impressions are found, because when I imagine excavating a fossil... It seems like how would you know that this rock that's next to the fossil is a skin impression or it's just a piece of rock that's next to the fossil? And do you know before you even know there's a fossil there? Because if you're just digging down. Yeah, I have no idea. It's pretty impressive that they ever managed to get those things, in my opinion. It is. So Carnotaurus had a different pattern on its head compared to the body, and it had large knob-like bumps on either side of the neck, back, and tail in irregular rows. And the bumps were larger towards the top of Carnotaurus. They were probably clusters of scutes, as seen on hadrosaurids. And they may have helped protect its sides when fighting either other Carnotauruses or other theropods. This is similar to what iguanas have, which helps protect them in fights. Again, there's no evidence of feathers. And if you'd like, you can see the holotype of Carnotaurus on display at the Argentine Museum of Natural Sciences. And you can also see a life-size sculpture at the Natural History Museum in L.A. And this was made by Stephen and Sylvia... Circus, and the museum ordered it in the mid-1980s, and it's one of the first theropod replicas to show skin accurately. That's cool. I can't believe we haven't been to that museum yet. Yeah. That's how often we're in or around L.A. <laughs> Carnotaurus is also mentioned in The Lost World by Michael Crichton. There's Carnotauruses that can camouflage, and then the characters scare them away with flashlights. Oh, it's like Indominus Rex. Yeah. It's got cuttlefish DNA. Oh, no. <laughs> So again, Carnotaurus is part of the family Abelosauridae, and that name means Abel's lizards. It's a clad of ceratosaurian theropods that lived in the Jurassic and Cretaceous in Gondwana, in Africa, South America, India, and Madagascar. And Jose Bonaparte and Fernando Noves named 
Abelosauridae in 1985 when they described Abelosaurus, which was named after Roberto Abel, who discovered it. Abelosaurids are bipedal and carnivorous. They had short hind limbs and ornamentation on the skull bones. The skulls were generally tall and shallow, and they had four digits on the hand. And they're also part of the group Ceratosaurs. And this group, at least a few of them, Limosaurus and Ceratosaurus, had short arms, and they lived in the Jurassic. 